most important components of any functioning democratic process or system is to support and applaud political activism, political rhetoric. It is important to do that. But Laura Ingram doesn't seem to support it. In fact, recently she did a little commentary in regard to LeBron James's statements about Donald Trump. Now, ESPN did a special segment where certain NBA players were interviewed about political issues. And here's what LeBron James had to say and how much Laura Ingram hated it. Take a look. This is a jump doc alert. NBA superstar LeBron James is talking politics again, and this time it's R rated. Here's his barely intelligible, not to mention ungrammatical take on President Trump in a new ESPN podcast. The number one job in America, the point of person, is someone who doesn't understand the people and really don't give a fuck about the people. But wait, there's more gripping insight. ESPN host Carrie Champion asked James and fellow NBA star Kevin Durant about what she described as Trump's racist comments. I feel like our team as a, as a country is not ran by a great coach. It's not even a surprise when he says something. It's not even surprising. It's like laughable. It's like it's that's laughable. Bad. It's laughable yeah. and but it's it, scary. But it's also scary right, because right. I shouldn't be numb to your racist comments. Right, right. I shouldn't yeah. be numb to your behavior. So you know they address uh, Trump's rhetoric and how it has led to uh, some racists basically feeling comfortable and emboldened enough to come out and share their perspectives on certain communities. And I thought that it was interesting to hear uh, that perspective, especially as. Uh, someone, LeBron James, who is someone who experienced a significant amount of racism himself personally, very recently. Someone had uh, spray painted the N word on his home in Los Angeles, California, which is, by the way, supposed to be a liberal part of the country. And he made a really interesting statement at the time about how, even as a successful black man who is wealthy and living in uh, a, an affluent part of the country, you still get confronted by that type of racial tension, by that type of racism. That is a perspective that should be heard. And as someone who has a platform like LeBron James does, I feel like you know he has almost some sort of a responsibility to provide a voice for people who are voiceless. And I applaud him for doing what he did. So this is a typical conservative thing of a <laughs> dumb jock, entertainer, just do your job, shut up already. Uh, I, that's to be fair to the Republicans. I mean, if you're an entertainer, they don't want to hear from you. Like, if you're an actor like Ronald Reagan, they got no interest. Or Scott Bayo. Or, or uh, Ted Nugent. I mean, you want to talk about dumb entertainers, um, the guy who crapped his pants to get out of Vietnam. Uh, or, for example, a reality show host, and you're a very stable genius, slash, one of the dumbest guys alive, uh, who says things like, I have the best words. One of the two great attributes that I've had all throughout my life is that I'm mentally stable. Who says that? But I don't remember Laura Ingram to telling that dumb entertainer to shut up. She was supporting him nonstop. So all of a sudden, though, when you don't agree, dumb jock, <laughs> yeah, whatever. And already get a load of the hypocrisy here. I mean, you saw the uh, the. Chirons that they had, the graphics, are rated comments by LeBron. And she said he's getting profane. Do you know that Bobby Knight, also in basketball, but a white coach, when he supported Donald Trump and used curse words and was profane in supporting Donald Trump, the same Laura Ingram said, oh, that was great. He rejected political correctness. That's right. And she uh, is very supportive of a president who had said that he grabs women by the pussy. I mean, I would argue that that's a little, um, it's not really G rated, that's a little R rated for my taste. Um, now, well, no, that was just locker room talk. Just locker Le room talk. But no. LeBron James and Kevin Durant cannot do locker room talk, even though they're in an actual locker room. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, it almost seems like he, she has two different standards. Hmm. So let's hear a little bit more about her perspective on the comments coming from these players. Take a listen. Must they run their mouths like that? Unfortunately, a lot of kids and some adults take these ignorant comments seriously. Look, there might be a cautionary lesson in LeBron for kids. 
This is what happens when you attempt to leave high school a year early to join the NBA. And it's always unwise to seek political advice from someone who gets paid $100 million a year to bounce a ball. Oh, and LeBron and Kevin, you're great players, but no one voted for you. Millions elected Trump to be their coach. So keep the political commentary to yourself, or as someone once said, shut up and dribble. Well, you know, three million more actually voted for Trump's opponent, uh, but that's not convenient information for your little commentary segment. By the way, Dwayne Wade, who's good friends with LeBron James, uh, wanted to share uh, his thoughts on this, and he said, they used to try to hide it, meaning racism. Now the president has given everyone the courage to live their truths. Hmm. So my take on this, um, so I know Laura English. Uh, and here's the thing, the one thing I will give the Fox News Channel, because I work there, uh, is that nobody's editorialized. We're never editorialized, we can say what we want to say. We're never brought into the executive's office because we said something that they didn't like. Um, and I think that's the benefit at working there. And I think Laura is entitled to her opinions. I disagree with her vehemently on this particular one. But she's entitled to her opinions, but I think as much as she's entitled to her opinions, LeBron James and Kevin Durant and Dwayne Wade are entitled to theirs. And there should be equal standard on that. But to say that you know their language is R rated, when our president, and I've said this over and over again, that our kids are watching. And when our president can get up in a rally in front of 100,000 or 10,000, however many people he wants to say was at his big rally, and call Colin Kaepernick an SOB. Thank you. Or he can get up at a rally and say, you're fake news, you're an idiot, you get out, get him out, rough him up, punch him in the face. This is not okay. Kevin Durant and LeBron James are not the president of the United States. She's right on that particular point. But to some extent, the president of the United States has absolutely no morals at all. He's not a role model. I don't want I don't have any kids, but if I did have kids, I wouldn't want them to model I wouldn't want to model them after the president. And I you know, there's a lot of Republicans that I don't like, but I would actually think it would be okay for my kids to look up to George W. Bush. I would think it'd be okay for my kids to look up to H.W. I would think it's okay for my kids to look up to Ronald Reagan. I don't like their policies, but how they conducted themselves in the White House as honorable men. This guy we have in the White House now, his moral stand, he's brought the White House down to moral standards is like gutter. Where the White House is now gutter. It's You're right. gutter You're right. reality show, VH1 level reality shows where we are at the White House. I mean, it's, it's amazing because <laughs> everything that she's accusing LeBron James of being is what she loves about Donald Trump. I mean, she criticizes LeBron James for uh, his profanity and for his grammar. Do you think that Donald Trump is a great public speaker? <laughs> Do you think that his grammar is top notch? Does he sound like an educated person? I know he went to um, some of the best schools, the best, the schools. best schools. No, <laughs> yeah. no one, no one's ever been as educated as I am. That's like something Trump would say, but he wouldn't even say it correctly. I mean, he doesn't know how to speak. He can't put two words together, and he, she has the audacity to go after other people over their grammar. Look, real quick, I got to say a bunch of things. Number one, I, I, look, I don't want my kids. Modeled after any of those guys, to be honest. Uh, so it's George W. Bush started a war, millions of people died. He's a terrible guy. He, yes, he doesn't curse and he, he, he doesn't do the vulgar things that Trump does. Reagan's done terrible, terrible things. They're, they're actions of vulgar. But I understand what you're saying, and I don't care about cursing. Lyndon Johnson cursed all the time. I don't care. Uh, so why are athletes the only people not allowed to give their opinions? When Joe the plumber came out in 2008 and hated Obama, they're like, yes, a plumber. Okay, so why are the athletes the only Americans not allowed to give their opinions? And if you don't know the history of it, and if you're being kind to Laura Ingram, she's ignorant and doesn't know the history of it, but I don't think so, I think she does know it. When you tell African Americans to stop running their mouths, just shut up and do the physical activity that we told you to do. That has a deep history in this country. So if you don't know it, look into it. There's a lot of books about it. It's Black yeah. History Month. It is Black History Month. <laughs> and so the connotations there are very, very clear. If you like this video, bless your heart. We got a lot more where that came from. We do a full show every day, Monday through Friday. Come enjoy it ad free by becoming a member, tytnetwork.com slash join.